Alrighty, today's video comes from the heckin r slash Linux subreddit, so be sure to leave some updates on the video and donate some Reddit gold, kind stranger. But this topic here, it's, it's one that a lot of Linux nerds love to talk about, right? The year of the Linux desktop. It's kind of like our version of the rapture, right? Nobody knows for sure when it's gonna be, but when that day comes, it's supposed to be a pretty sweet time. So this person here is predicting, well, actually, no, that's not the right word, speculating, that's a better word, about whether or not the day of the Linux desktop is going to be October the 14th, 2025, because that is going to be the Windows 10 end of life date. And so this person thinks that there could be a tsunami of new Linux users coming in as, I guess, refugees needing a new comfy operating system after Windows 10 bites the dust. But I gotta be honest with you, as awesome as this would be for Tux to get a huge bump in market share from this, to have a whole bunch of new Linux users and all of the cascading effects from that, you know, encouraging more devs to actually develop programs for Linux. I don't think that the death of Windows 10 is going to make much of a difference, at least not in terms of making a tsunami of desktop Linux users. Because we've been here before where Windows 7 became end of life. It actually became end of life fairly recently. I think January of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And in my opinion, a lot of people feel this way that Windows 7 was the best version of Windows ever. And hell, there's still a lot of mad lads out there that are using it right now. I mean, Windows 7 actually has a, well, a much higher market share than Linux, but get this, it even has a higher market share than Windows 8 and Windows 11, which just speaks volumes of how good Windows 7 was and, well, also how shit Windows 8 and Windows 11 was. And I like to imagine that all of the mad lads that are still using Windows 7 are also still like using Internet Explorer too, just clicking all sorts of sussy links that they find. They've got like 15 toolbars installed in their browser, just not giving a fuck. But the point is, 7's death, it mostly gave a boost to Windows 10's market share, right? Linux just didn't get a huge boost from it. Uh, neither did Mac OS from what I can tell. And the same thing was true for when Windows XP became deprecated. Although if you wanna talk about mad lads, the mad lads that are still using Windows XP as their daily driver, that's a whole other level. In fact, apparently there's some countries out there that still have a lot of their infrastructure based in Windows XP. Like you'll see this at subways and things like that. You know, when they're down for service, you might see a Windows XP error screen. It's like, wow, holy crap. We wonder why so many hacking attacks happen. It may be this is part of the reason. But the point is every time a version of Windows has gone end of life, even when its popular versions like XP and 7, never has it ended up creating a huge boost to the percentage of people using Linux. Now, a lot of the people that are discussing this back and forth on this post are saying that things are different now uh, and they're giving all sorts of different reasons. The most sound argument that I've probably seen though is people bringing up the Steam Deck and how that is going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on game devs to make their games work natively on Linux. And it also is going to include some improvements to Proton because, well, that's what the Steam Deck is gonna use for games if they don't work on Linux natively. But that's only going to help with the PC gamer market, which yes, it is a pretty big market. Uh, it's also a really expensive market, right? If you throw some RGB on stuff, you can get gamers to pay triple for that shit but the vast majority of computers out there are absolutely garbage at playing video games. Most of them don't even have dedicated graphics cards. I mean, think of just all of the computers and offices and libraries. They don't have graphics cards in their desktops, and that goes double or triple for laptops, right? They very rarely have graphics cards, even if we look at bestbuy.com and search for laptops, okay? None of these have dedicated graphics, except for this one here. It's got a 3050 Ti, so like a gaming laptop 
which, um, you know, in my opinion, gaming laptops are kind of a meme. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if you're somebody who does not gaming, but like maybe some graphics intense work on the go, like maybe if you need to edit videos out in the field, it might make sense to have a laptop with uh, a dedicated graphics card. But for gaming, it's like, what, you're going to play your game for half an hour <laughs> and then you got to plug it back into a charger, in which case you would be way better off having a desktop because you're sitting at a desk. But the point is, most people, when they buy a computer, they just want a machine that can run a browser and maybe Microsoft Office um, and, you know, maybe a game here and there, but mostly Office and browser is what they want, uh, which might make you think, hey, well, doesn't that mean that the year of the Linux desktop should already be here? Because we've got browsers and we've got Office apps which is a point that I've actually made in the past to people who are thinking of trying out Linux or maybe they just wanna have better online privacy, right? Like that's one of the angles that VPNs are sold with and everybody's shilling VPNs these days. So obviously people out there want some kind of privacy um, and that's why I guess I shill them Linux, right? Because that's probably the biggest thing that you could do uh, installing a free and open source operating system to reclaim some of that privacy on the desktop. But there's still that requirement of effort for an end user to do the work of installing a different operating system, which I hate to say is a bit of a lost art. I mean, yeah, there's people like myself or DistroTube that install all kinds of different distros, either on bare metal or uh, to a virtual machine, and we do reviews of different Linux distros. And hell, there's even a few thousand people out there that like to watch the videos of us doing that, uh, which is great that you guys enjoy it. But in terms of, I guess, a regular person that you would pass on the street installing Linux or having any interest in doing that or hell, any operating system on their computer. You know, most people aren't going to go out there and try to like downgrade to Windows 7, right? When they were told, oh, Windows 10 is end of life. Most people were like, okay, yeah, we're going to uh, move on to the next thing. And it's just the mad lads out there that are like, oh, I've got a, compu a new computer with Windows 10. I'm going to go downgrade it to Windows 7. That's actually something that I did a couple of times. Well, not with 10, with uh, Windows 8. When it comes to just installing operating systems, that's something that not a lot of people do. And it's, it's not even that it's difficult, right? Because even... Richard Stallman and Linus Trevalds, they don't install their own operating systems either. They get someone else to do it for them. Uh, it's a pretty small subset of the tech community that's really into operating systems and installing them. And unfortunately, that's the only thing that I think would give the Linux desktop a really big boost in market share to compete with the likes of Mac OS or possibly even Windows would be a corporate-backed distro that can make the deals with Dell, with Lenovo, with other laptop manufacturers to essentially create an OEM distro that just is installed on the computers out of the box when people buy them. And then also they might have to work with the stores, right? They'd have to make deals with Walmart and Best Buy uh, so that these computers are being sold to people. That's what will really create a tsunami of Linux users I don't think software compatibility is the problem because like I said, we've got browsers, we've got office apps, lots of games actually do work fine on Linux with Proton and there's going to be many more to come because of the pressure that the Steam Deck is going to create. So we're pretty much good in terms of software compatibility. It's just the fact that Linux isn't pre-installed. And the unfortunate part about a corporate OEM Linux system is that most of us Long-term Linux users, or us veterans, I guess, would probably hate something like that. I mean, just look at Chrome OS as an example. It was originally based on Gentoo, which is, well, very based indeed. But at the end of the day, Chrome OS is Google spyware. So we really don't like it. And most likely, this fictional OEM distro that brings the ear of the desktop is also going to have some spyware components built into it. Just look at Ubuntu, for example, which is probably the closest thing to an OEM distro. It's, I mean, in terms of Linux market share, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest one. Uh, lots of people 
that start going down the rabbit hole of Linux and privacy hate Ubuntu because of things like search tracking and telemetry, although it is opt-in for now. Windows has the market share advantage because most of the computers that you can buy come with it pre-installed. And if we actually got something like that with Linux, it might be like a monkey's paw wish and turn out to be even worse than Ubuntu. Unless some rich person who really cares about free software decides to do all of the funding for it uh, and has Richard Stallman right by his side, I guess, deciding how all the money should be spent. Uh, but the point is, Windows 10's, Windows 10's death won't bring a big rise to the Linux desktop unless you're willing, like individual people out there who are encountering these Windows 10 refugees, if you're willing to actually help those Windows 10 users personally migrate to Linux. Um, a grassroots movement. That's the only way that I really see it happening. But until you get that crazy OEM distro that we're all going to hate, you're not going to see companies making a big push to get users on Linux. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.